पंचाकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम एंड हम्बली बेग फॉर योर ब्लेसिंग्स सो दैट आई मे बी एबल टू स्पीक समथिंग that is pleasing to the vaishnav pleasing to our gurudev pleasing to prabhupad pleasing to the supreme personality of godhead please forgive me if i disappoint you or in some way do not come up to your expectations i humbly beg your pardon for that so guru maharaj has asked me to choose a verse and i would like to choose 10148 it's a very very famous verse in our scriptures Lavanya, should I pull that up on my screen? Yes, Mataji. Or uh, I can, I can do that. One second, Mataji. Um, can you just repeat the verse, Mataji? Ten, fourteen, eight. Yes. Tattenu kampam sus samikshamanu. Ten, fourteen, eight. Yes, Mataji. One second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj has been traveling a lot and has arrived late in the night. so he is still getting a little organized he wants us to know that and he will be joining us again tomorrow there we go thank you so this is verse 10 14 a and we will recite it om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवायाकुर्भिर्दे जीवेत यो मुक्ति पदे सदा भाक एंड द ट्रांसलेशन इज मै डियर लॉर्ड वन हु अर्नेस्टली वेट्स फॉर यू टू बेस्ट आउ योर कॉजलेस मर्सी अपॉन हिम all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart words and body he is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim and purport by his divine grace shila prabhupad we have not a very long purport but it would be nice for one of my god brothers a god sisters to read the purport for us today and we will choose somebody who doesn't normally speak up even though they are very attentive <laughs> madhavananda prabhu could you please read for us hari krishna shri devi uh, please accept my humble obeisance to all glories to shri prabhupada and all glories to assembled devotees sorry i am on the mobile phone i cannot read so if somebody else can read i would be very much <laughs> grateful for that sorry sorry very much okay i get it all right uh would susanna like to read doesn't look like she is there oh there she is susanna would you like to read for us um i will try thank you thank you it's um how can i make it bigger i'm trying to make the screen bigger sorry for the you want me to make the screen bigger mata ji please lavanya thank you mm. <laughs> sorry but okay i'll try i'll try like but uh, it's, it's it's already full mata ji um, okay i will try like this let's see thank you okay sorry shrida <laughs> shrida swami explains in this commentary that just as a legitimate son has to simply remain alive to gain an inheritance from his father one who simply remains alive in krishna consciousness following the regulative principles of bhakti yoga automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of the personality of godhead in other words he will be promoted to the kingdom of god the word susami shamana indicates that a devotee earnestly awaits the mercy of the supreme lord 
even while suffering the painful effects of previous sinful activities. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that a devotee who fully surrenders unto him is no longer liable to suffer the reactions of his previous karma. However, because in his mind a devotee may still maintain the remnants of his previous sinful mentality, the Lord removes the last vestiges of the enjoying spirit by giving his devotee punishments that may sometimes resemble sinful reactions. The purpose of the entire creation of God is to rectify the living entity's tendency to enjoy without the Lord, and therefore the particular punishment given for a sinful activity is specifically designed to curtail the mentality that produced the activity. Although, although a devotee has surrendered to the Lord's devotional service until he is completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, he may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of this world. The Lord therefore creates a particular situation to eradicate this remaining enjoying spirit. This unhappiness suffered by a sincere devotee is not technically a karmic re reaction, it's rather the Lord's special mercy for inducing his devotee to completely let go of the material world and return home back to Godhead. A sincere devotee earnestly desires to go back to the Lord's abode. Therefore, he willingly accepts the Lord's merciful punishments and continues offering respects and obeisances to the Lord with his heart, words, and body. Such a bona fide servant of the Lord, considering all hardship a small price in pay for gaining the personal association of the Lord, certainly becomes a legitimate son of God, as indicated here by the words Diyapak. Just as can, one cannot approach the sun without becoming fire, one cannot approach the Supreme Pure Lord Krishna without undergoing a rigid purificatory process, which may appear like suffering, but which is in fact a curative treatment administered by the personal hand of the Lord. Jai, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yenna Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. I offer my humble obeisances to my beloved spiritual master, by whose infinite mercy my eyes that were tightly shut by the darkness of ignorance have been opened by the torchlight of knowledge. Thank you all very much. So this is a very, very important and a very instructive verse for all of us. Srila Prabhupada said that after the Maha Mantra, every devotee should remember this verse. Because when we first joined the Hare Krishna movement, we are so enthusiastic. Everything is so wonderful. The kirtans are wonderful. The prasadam is wonderful. The deity worship is wonderful. The books are wonderful. Devotees are wonderful. Everything is wonderful. And then the real tests begin to start coming one by one by one. Somebody irritates you, somebody annoys you, somebody lets you down, somebody cheats you, somebody does this, somebody, and we start thinking, what is this? These are devotees. They're not supposed to be like this. Why is this happening to me? I thought everything is going to be wonderful. This is the spiritual world. And why am I facing all these things? So one by one, we start facing the tests that Krishna is placing in front of us to see whether we are really ready to surrender. What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? Sarva dharma parityajya maam ekam sharanam varja aham tvam sarva pape muksha shami ma sujaha Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I will deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. But what happens when we are baby Hare Krishnas is we start doubting, we start questioning, we start saying, why is this happening? No, no, it's not supposed to be like this. Especially if we don't like something that is happening, 
our reaction is to balk at it, to rebel against it, to fight it, to try to again make things the way we want it to be. And then we find we are powerless over that situation or that person or that thing, and we have to surrender. So surrendering is a process and it happens little by little by little. As we surrender, we find Krishna is so faithful to his word. He's so kind and loving that even though we have come through a test of fire, we find looking back, oh, I did not need to be like that. I did not need to have that situation the way I wanted it. In fact, I'm better off now because of the purification I've undergone. Through that purification, sometimes our sadhana becomes stronger. Sometimes our reading will become stronger or our service attitude will become stronger. So Krishna will always pull you through the fire and in return, he will you give you something invaluable, one more jewel of bhakti. So we are never the losers in Krishna consciousness. It may appear like that on the surface. Oh, I've lost my house. I've lost my health. I've lost my spouse. I've lost my bank balance. I've lost this. I've lost that. It may appear like that. But that is actually the Lord's way of taking away these last vestiges of the enjoying spirit, which is mentioned over here, that the Lord doesn't want his devotee to be struggling in this material world as Srila Prabhupada said, to be rotting in this material existence, facing all these situations again and again and again. He wants the devotee to come back to him. Just as a loving father wants his child to be nicely situated, Krishna, as a loving parent, is just telling us, how long are you going to try to be happy in this material world, my dear spirit soul? You don't belong here. You belong to me. Come back to me. Don't waste time. <laughs> but we are still caught up in the things of this world. Like little children, you know, is still uh, awed by the glitter of the material energy. We are still trying to enjoy something over here because that is actually the nature of the soul to enjoy. But the nature of the soul to enjoy with Krishna is the best way. And actually, our enjoyment comes in giving Krishna enjoyment. That is our enjoyment. When we serve Krishna very nicely, we become happy. Vaishnavas become happy. Our spiritual master becomes happy. Prabhupada becomes happy. And this is the happiness that the devotee really wants because this is ever-increasing happiness. There is no limit to it. There's no limit to how much we can serve. There's no limit to how well we can serve. So this is the nectar for which we are always anxious, isn't it? As the verse says in Shikshashtakam prayer, Keto darpanam arjanam, bhava maha davagni nirvapanam, shreya kairava chandrika vitranam, vidya vadu jivanam, anandam buddhi vardhanam, pratipadam purnam ritaswadhanam, sarvatma snapanam, param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam. All glories to the shri krishna sankirtanam, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years together and thus extinguishes the blazing fire of conditioned life of repeated birth and death. This Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. So this is the nectar sweet service to Krishna for which our soul is always hankering and which is the nature of the soul. Eternal, full of bliss, full of knowledge and completely and purely satisfying the Lord in service. This is our real nature. And in our conditioned nature, we have this perverted idea of enjoying without Krishna. So when a sincere soul surrenders to Krishna, Krishna understanding the mentality of that devotee he starts making arrangements. Tesham satata yukta nam vajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. What does that mean? To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So Krishna starts clearing up all our misconceptions, all our perverted 
you know, desires, our material attachments, our material in, uh, desire to enjoy fruitive activities all the time. We are caught up in this network and that is why we have taken birth again and again and again. But if we want to purify ourselves, as the very last paragraph says, we have to become like fire, like iron placed in the fire becomes red hot and become non-different from fire, we cannot hope to enter the kingdom of God with all our anarthas. Not possible. No entry. <laughs> so what do we have to do? Purify, purify, purify ourselves. Purity is the force. Books are the basis. Utility is the principle. Preaching is the essence. So we want to purify ourselves more and more and more and more until we are ready to be called back into the kingdom of God. And what is that purification process? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we want to chant, 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 chant. We want to engage in the process of Bhakti Yoga very nicely. We want to make a strong foundation for our Krishna consciousness so that when the tests start coming, the storms start coming, we are able to face it with the mercy of Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. We see everything through Shastra Chakshus. We see everything through the eyes of the scripture. We are not bewildered. We are not confused. We are not under attack. Well, we are under attack by the material energy, but we are able to face up to the attack knowing with full conviction that Krishna is there and Krishna will protect us and Krishna will bring us out of that situation better than we were before. So this is the promise of Krishna. And when we follow the process very faithfully, what happens to us? We become eligible to enter the kingdom of God. Just as a son has to simply remain alive to gain his inheritance, what does he have to do? He simply has to remain alive. Simply, we have to remain alive in Krishna consciousness. That word is very significant, remaining alive. That means we are constantly endeavoring. We're constantly monitoring ourselves. We're constantly evaluating. Where do I have to focus more? What are my areas of weakness? What are my areas of strength? How can I capitalize on this? How can I eliminate these things? So we all have to do this process of introspection and look within to see where is my area of weakness. For example, I might be having a very critical mindset. I may not say anything, but in my mind, I'm thinking, why is this person like this? Why is this person like that? Why can't they do like this? Why can't they do like that? But this offensive mentality, as you start thinking about it, will come out in the form of critical words. Once it comes out in the form of words, there'll be some critical action that follows. So we must very carefully be evaluating what is happening over here because mind, <laughs> mind is where all the problems begin. The mind has kept us in this material world. My dear devotees, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So we want to control the mind. We want to make it our best friend. We don't want it to be our enemy constantly telling us, do this, do that, do that, do that, which is contrary to our bhakti. So we want to keep evaluating and we want to be equal to all the tests which comes because we understand the Lord is giving us only a token punishment. A very small portion is coming. Actually, I should have suffered much, 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 much more. But Krishna is so kind that he is making it very small and bearable for me. Otherwise, I would be finished. Isn't it? So Krishna in his kindness knows our mentality and he arranges those particular tests for us which are custom made. It is custom made so that you can come out a better person, a better devotee, a better child, a better parent, a better mother, a better teacher, a better devotee. Overall, whatever your service, you will become better and better and better at it. Why? Because Krishna is purifying you of all those sinful tendencies, all those material attachments, all those fruitive desires that are inimical, that are spoiling our devotional service and that are keeping us rooted to this material world. Have you ever seen how a tree is uprooted? It's a very big deal. 
because the roots have gone down so deep. <laughs> Similarly, uh, anarthas have very deep roots going back into lifetimes. So to pull them out is hard work. We have to work hard. Our most important hard work of the day is what? Our chanting. So therefore putting our efforts into quality chanting, waking up early in the morning, chanting a Mangalati prayers, begging for the mercy of the spiritual master and the predecessor acharyas, and then engaging very nicely in the process of hearing the holy name and in the mood of calling out like a child for the mother, begging for the protection, begging for purification, begging for a chance to get engaged in Krishna's devotional service. That's how we begin our day. Once that strong foundation is in place, then Krishna gives us the intelligence, dadami buddhi yogam tam, how to carry out our activities, how to plan the day nicely, what are the things that need to be stressed on, and what are the things we can just ignore, you know, otherwise the mind will constantly be chattering away, but we remain focused because we have done the hard work of clearing out all the nonsense in the head so that the mind is no longer in control. Who is in control? Go and Krishna in control. And we are simply following, like little ducklings following baby mother duck. We are simply following the words of Guru. We want to make the words and the instructions of the spiritual master our life and soul. Let those words be branded in our heart like letters of fire and let us be constantly meditating on those instructions because those are the instructions which will save us. They are our lifeline to get out of this material world, which we all desire, because who wants to be here? Can we see around us what is happening? Look at one little COVID and what is happening. Look at how what the governments are doing. The taxation is becoming more and more demoniac and draconian. You know, there is no desire to benefit the common man. So demons are in control and it's only going to get worse. So let us take this opportunity, go back home. Don't let's waste time here. Let us all be dancing and chanting and serving Krishna in the spiritual world. That's our real home, not this place where there is danger at every step. There is always some problem at every step. We don't want to be here too long. We want to go back, regain our constitutional position. And for that, we have to undergo this purificatory process. However painful it may be, it is actually done to make us better. So when we have this conviction in our heart, we can face the situation without feeling despair, without feeling hopeless, without feeling, what is this happening to me? Because we know there's a supreme controller who is lovingly pulling me through to a better place. So I want to also um, uh, speak a little bit more about how the Lord creates a particular situation to eradicate this remaining enjoying spirit. Each of us has a particular, you know, rasa of enjoying something in this material world. And Krishna will take away exactly that. <laughs> he will take away that. Why? Because he doesn't want you to enjoy the false happiness of this world. And we must understand it is not a karmic reaction. It is the Lord's special mercy. And Krishna says, when I so, show special favor to my devotee, I take everything away from him. Then the poor helpless fellow, he is rejected by everyone. Friends, relatives, colleagues, boss, everybody, they say, they change their phone numbers. They say, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with this person. And what does that poor devotee do? Like Draupadi, throwing up her hands and saying, hey, Govinda, you are my only shelter. You are my only protection. And then you surrender simply because there is no other choice. We do, the living entity doesn't want to surrender, but Krishna will arrange in such a way that we will surrender. And then as we surrender more and more, we find ourselves actually becoming more and more calm, more and more peaceful, more and more stable, less and less affected by the material energy. And we understand Krishna has my interest at heart. He knows what he is doing. I didn't understand it when it was happening. But now I'm much, much better off now that I have come through this process. So having faith, Shraddha, and how is faith built? In the association of devotees, through the words of the spiritual master. 
through the reading, re regular reading of the Shastras, we become stronger and stronger in our faith and conviction because we see this is true. This is real. It's not a catchphrase. It's not some sloganeering. It's not some advertising gimmick. Chant and be happy actually happens. And as we have faith, we surrender more. As we surrender more, we have more faith. This is the only place where you will find the truth. In the material world, we have all got cheated, let down, disappointed, hurt, exploited, abused, etc., etc. And we have gone through this lifetime after lifetime. But the words of the bona fide spiritual master are the light in the darkness that will take us out into who we really are, loving, pure servitors of Krishna. And that is where we belong. That is our home. But it is not going to be so easy as it says over here, you have to undergo a rigid purificatory process which may appear like suffering, but which is in fact a curative treatment. Just as the surgeon has to use a knife and sometimes do some drastic surgery to get a diseased body part out, Krishna will do surgery. <laughs> And he will remove those things which are diseased, which are causing us problems. And he will release us from that particular material disease of enjoying in a particular way to bring us to a higher stage of spiritual understanding, to a higher stage of spiritual functioning, and to make us better devotees. Because my dear brothers and sisters, what else do we want? Tell me, don't we want to go back to who we really are? Blissful eternal, full of knowledge, full of bliss, eternally happy, ever increasingly happy in the spiritual world, that is our home, where every word is a song, every step is a dance, every day is a festival, and there's ever increasing happiness and joy and love of serving Krishna, the supreme, most beloved, and the greatest and the best person that we can have a relationship with. So thank you very much for listening very patiently. We can now open up for discussion, uh, comments, um, corrections, uh, realizations, whatever you would like to uh, speak. I will humbly request you to share. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Arkut Maharaj. Um, thank you so much, Mataji. Uh, very nice uh, verse you have chosen and uh, nicely explained. Um, I just want to uh, share my um, my point. Like I was thinking, uh, <clears throat> like whenever we want to achieve a particular goal, uh, we have to work hard towards that goal. So as you said, like um, we we all want to go back to Godhead, but uh, <clears throat> but it's a difficult task. So it's not uh, um, maybe it's it's not done in one lifetime, but we have to do a lot of hard work for that. So without doing any hard work or without giving a lot of time, um, so we can't achieve that particular goal. Mm -hmm. So, and that also uh, with the mercy of Krishna and with the mercy of Srila Prabhup um, Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj, uh, mm -hmm. we can uh, we can be able to uh, move towards our goal. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what uh, even I was thinking. Like we have to, as uh, from our part, we have to do like sincere services, sincere chanting, sincere reading. Uh, then only um, we'll be able to achieve our goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, very true. We have to work hard. Actually, Srila Prabhupada explains that in this material world, unless we work very, very hard and put 100%, we, and, then only we will get success in the material uh, world. But if we work hard for Maya, we just get another birth. We work hard for Krishna, we will go back to Krishna as you said, maybe not in this lifetime, maybe it'll take a few lifetimes, but at least we are on the right road. At least we are not wandering round and round in the maze where there is no result. Shrama eva hi kevalam, otherwise what is the use? What is the use 
of being a topmost politician or a topmost CEO or a topmost diplomat or a topmost anything in this material world because at the time of death, everything is gone and you have to start all over again, take birth again, come back again, uh, you know, be in a womb of a mother and then come out and then all things that follow from that. For me, you know, the most, worst thing is going to school. <laughs> Just the thought of having to go back to school is enough for me to say no more. <laughs> you know, imagine having to answer exams, do tests, do this, do that, go through all that stuff, then go through adolescence and all the problems of adolescence and all the problems of middle age and then the, all the problems of old age. Such a miserable existence that we are undergoing here. We are in a diseased condition. Having this material body is a disease. However healthy it may be, it's a diseased condition because we are not meant to be in this material body. Our real nature is pure spirit soul. That's who we really are. So let's work hard for Krishna and let us really pray to Krishna because Krishna promises. He says this, Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru maam evaishasi satyam te prati jane priyosime. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer homage to me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. And when Krishna promises something, he keeps his word. He's not like us. Yeah, uh, I made a promise. Yeah, but you know what? I, I think I would like to take it back. <laughs> Krishna is not like that. When he makes a promise, he keeps his word. So when he's promising us this, he will keep his word. We have to do our part. So very nice. You brought out a very nice point. To achieve anything, to achieve any goal, we have to work so hard. So why not, you know, make our goal the supreme goal of going back to Krishna? Even if we fail, so what? There is no loss or diminution in this process because you will pick up where you left off. But if you work hard materially, we don't gain anything. Everything is gone at the time of death. So working hard spiritually is actually the intelligent way to conduct our life. Good point. Thank you, Lavanya. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, dear Sri, Sri Devi, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to uh, Srila Gurudev. Thank you very much for this, uh, for this nice class. Um, I, I actually have some reflection and, and also a question. Mm -hmm. I will start with the first one. It's actually not about the philosophical parts uh, which you said, but I very, very much like the way how you, you present uh, this whole philosophy, because I mean, the way you, you, uh, you say all these things, it's, it's really like telling a, a story, uh, the way your voice is, uh, you know, <laughs> and um, I very much like it because actually uh, I've heard it uh, in some classes that uh, also, our our life is a big story, you know. Like there is uh, Ramayana, Mahabharata, and and stuff. And we like to listen to this, how others uh, go through their difficulties. And actually, this is the same for us. So we have our own challenges, but uh, it also can be some glorious uh, thing if we we can do it properly. And uh, mm -hmm. the way you, you uh, told all these things just reminded me of, of uh, this uh, because, uh, because actually, uh, you know, as you quoted uh, Krishna so many times that, and, and also that uh, he said that uh, his devotee never uh, perishes. So, so yeah, it just uh, really reminded me of, of, of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also would have one question uh, mm -hmm. that uh, there are these uh, threefold miseries uh, of the material life. And uh, uh, I, I just wonder that uh, uh, there is the, the suffering, suffering which is caused by our own mind. And mm -hmm. this is also the, the result of, uh, of karma or 
um, or we can do something about it or <laughs> how, how this one works because I, I understand that uh, the, the other two are caused by, by others. So it's obviously some arrangements, but I never knew what, what is it about the suffering which we cause to our, ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the mind is a repository of many, 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 many millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of lifetimes of desires, aversions, hatreds, dislikes, you know, so many different things are all stored there in the mind. So we are coming into this lifetime with the cumulative, you know, accumulation of all those things. And so our karma is definitely involved with that because whatever our desires, it follows by, it's followed by an action. And that action gives rise to another reaction and so on. So definitely some of us are, say, having more peacefulness or stability or calmness, maybe because of pious activities. Some of us are very challenged by mental illness. I can personally testify that I struggled for many years with mental illness. And it is only because of Krishna consciousness that I have been able to overcome some things. So um, karma is definitely involved, no doubts about it. But what is the redeeming feature is with Krishna consciousness, the holy name will crush all our anarthas. We can rest assured, whether we have anxiety, whether we are prone to depression, whether we have panic attacks, whether we have bipolar, whether we have this or that or whatever it may be, the holy name will release you from that particular anartha. We have to take the process seriously and we will find ourselves, see, I have an anger problem. I am very easily triggered. You know, some things have happened in my past and now if I see someone or see something, I just react in a very aggressive way. But slowly, slowly, through the process of Krishna consciousness, I will find myself reacting less. The triggers will affect me less. I will be less reactive to that stimulus. And one fine day, I will be free and clear. That thing will no longer have the power to provoke me as it did in the past. I may not be where I want to be, but thank Krishna, I'm not where I was. 30 years ago. <laughs> so we can rest assured that little by little by little, we will be able to overcome all these anarthas, all these mental health issues, whatever they may be, by the power of Krishna consciousness. I, I hope that answers your question. It was really, really uh, understandable. It's, it's uh, totally clear now. So thank you very much. It, uh, it, uh, I just really didn't... Uh, think uh, about this, that uh, how this mental, uh, I mean, the way of thinking, uh, where it comes from. And actually, it, it totally makes sense that from, from past uh, uh, actions. So, so thank you very much for clarifying the, this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You've actually raised such an important uh, subject, you know, Radha Vinodini, because really it is the mind. And if we can get our minds under control, if we can purify that, those tendencies, we have actually won, you know, 90% of the battle right there because it all begins in the mind. That is why Krishna is repeatedly saying, even in the Gita, that make the mind your best friend. Don't let it be your enemy because it's always dragging us here and there. It's like a wild beast, you know. Uh, it just, <laughs> you know, just as you have to keep a wild beast under lock and key, you have to just keep that mind, you know, inside the cage. And that comes only through the power of Krishna consciousness. There's no other way to do it. We might take pills, we might take medicines, we might take sedatives, we might take this and that and do all this, you know. And I, I'm not denying that. I'm a mental health professional myself. And who else but Krishna can do that? <laughs> Make a mentally ill person. <laughs> a mental health professional. Only Krishna, only Guru and Krishna can do such things. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, it's impossible. But we can overcome by the power of Bhakti Yoga any limiting thing. There are no limits, Radha Vinodini. There are no limits in this. 
we can fly and soar like eagles and we should but shila prabhupada we should do this we have to serve with whatever capacity we have we have to each take it upon ourselves to say i have this one talent or this one skill but i want to be the best little ant for krishna we may be little ants we may be little spiders like that uh, lord ram story you know that little spider he could only carry two little grains of sand so what let me carry that little grain of sand as nicely as i can let me carry the little grain how many grains as pos- as many grains as possible to build lord ram's bridge so we may be very simple humble um, you know janitors or 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 a simple humble homemaker or just a little itty bitty you know nothing very much you know so what krishna is an equal opportunity employer everyone is welcome anyone is welcome even a mentally ill person is welcome <laughs> and krishna will transform those things which are pulling us down and he will help us to rise above that particular anartha and shila prabhupada has sacrificed everything to give us the path back home my dear brothers and sisters this is the real deal this it doesn't get any better than this there is no better greater process than this if we simply take to this process we will go back home we must be completely convinced about this then we will put all our energies into the right thing and not waste our time with other things and it, this is actually what is needed because prabhupad wants that every one of us become ambassadors every one of us become messengers every one of us become an instrument because lord chaitanya wants that this movement spread to every town and village that every soul is picked up and we all go back home so i may be just a simple little housewife and my only skill may be i cook very nicely and shila prabhupada says this krishna has given everybody some extraordinary talent and when we use that talent in krishna service perfection we can make our lives perfect with that one single talent so i may only be know how to do good cooking let me do the best cooking possible let me start offering prasadam to people let them say please can you cater for my child's birthday party let me start something that the prasadam and soon i will develop a good reputation that this mata ji's cakes and pastries and pickles and jams and uh, pulao and uh, veg biryani is so wonderful we want to have this for our uh, kids birthday party we, you know you will be giving prasadam to everyone and you will be pleasing krishna you may not have gone to you know you may not have a great big high school education or a college education so what you have that one talent use it in krishna's service make your life perfect so nobody is barred and nobody has to feel small nobody has to feel um you know this uh, person is so great or that person is so great we are all we are all great in our own small humble way why because we are part and parcel of krishna and krishna is great so even though we are very tiny and very small when we plug into the process it's like this supposing i drive a cycle i can only go at 30 or 40 miles an hour but if i catch hold of an 18 wheeler which is going at 90 miles an hour what happens look now i'm going at 90 miles an hour isn't it so krishna will bring to us whatever we lack he will carry he will preserve what we have this is his promise this is one of my favorite go to verses it is a uh, ananya chintayanto maam ye jana paripashate eshan kya bhi yukta naam yoga kshemam vaham yaham to those who constantly worship me meditating on my transcendental form to them i carry what they lack and i preserve what they have so practically everything krishna is carrying in my case <laughs> to me because what do we have really we don't have very much but whatever little bit we have if we use it to serve krishna he will give more and more strength more and more resources more and more facilities so that we can do better and better and better in krishna consciousness just like that little sparrow she became so determined isn't it to serve the lord 
Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, to get back her eggs, uh, she 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 um, was very determined to get her eggs eggs back from the ocean. And then Garuda, hearing his little baby sister's determination, came to help. So great forces will come to our aid, provided we make up our mind. I want to serve Krishna. I want to serve this great mission in my own small, humble way. I want to be a little spider and build that bridge so that others can cross over, go back home, back to Godhead. Krishna will empower us more and more and more. Guaranteed. No, oh, it's so nice. Uh, you, you reminded me of uh, one uh, nice pastime from the Ramayana, which I heard lately, uh, which is connected to, to this. May I share it? Of course. Thank you very much. I, I very much like this one. It, uh, it's uh, from uh, Shubha Vilas Prabhu said this uh, in one of his classes about Hanuman. Uh, when she, uh, when he, he arrived to Lanka and met Sita Devi, but uh, he didn't want to scare him and just, uh, and uh, she just uh, hid uh, in a, he became very, very small and hid behind a leaf and started to narrate the Ramayan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sita Devi uh, uh, listened to it and started to look who, who's speaking. And then Hanuman uh, came forward and uh, uh, he suggested to Sita Devi that uh, he would take take her to to Lord Ramachandra. Mm -hmm. Sita Devi started to to laugh that oh you are so small how how you uh, suggest this that you you can uh, can take me and then Hanuman became so big and mm. and uh, Sita uh, Devi became amazed and asked oh but uh, just uh, now you you were so small and now you are so big. So mm -hmm. what is your original size? And uh, uh, Lord Han uh, so Hanuman's answer was so, so, so nice that uh, Mother Sita, originally I'm, I'm very, very tiny little, but uh, for the service of uh, Lord Ram, I, I can become uh, really, really big. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was so nice. I, I very much like this first time because it really shows what is real, real, genu genuine humility. Yes. So that I'm, I'm all the time small, but uh, yeah, it's, it's so nice. Very beautiful past. I mean, back, Hanuman is such a wonderful servitor that he is the embodiment of Dasyaras, the perfection of Dasyaras. So meditating on Hanuman can also help us to become, you know, more and more uh, convinced that, you know, with Lord's help, we can do anything. I know the Christians have a saying, they say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What do we say? I can do all things through mercy of Guru and Krishna who strengthen me. <laughs> In fact, without that, what can we do? We can do nothing. It is only the empowerment. Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girem yat kripa tamaham vande Shri Guru Dinatarini, by the mercy of the spiritual master, a lame man can climb mountains, a dumb man can sing eloquent poetry, and a blind man can see the stars. So you just see how much empowerment is there in our movement, how much we can really, really take to the process sincerely knowing that Krishna has our back, Guru and Krishna are there to protect us. We can be so reassured of protection by Guru and Krishna, that we must march forward fearlessly. We must say to ourselves, I am going to try my level best to be the best little ant and best little spider for Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You brought out such a nice point about Hanuman. Yeah, I, I really like him and I try to learn from him. <laughs> Yay. Please keep sharing more such pastimes. Very, very enlightening. Mataji, Namrata Mataji has a question on the chat. I'm not able to see everyone. What am I doing wrong, uh, Lavanya? Uh, suddenly I have lost the screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry. Namrata? You have a question, I believe? She has posted in the chat, Mataji. Okay. You can see or shall I read you? 
Okay, uh, Namrata says, can you put light on how someone can overcome guilt? Okay. Yeah, uh, guilt is a heavy burden to carry and we all struggle with that. We have done many wrong things, not just in this lifetime, but many previous lifetimes also. So it is not so easy to, to overcome guilt. If it's something small, you can take shelter of the process of Krishna consciousness and, you know, simply by the power of chanting, the holy name will give you so much realization, will clarify so many things, will release you from the painful, you know, sorrow you feel due to guilt. You may also like to open up and speak to someone who is wise, who is has some life experiences, who is, um, you know, kind, compassionate, loving and caring, some senior devotees in your congregation, some senior matajis who, who have been through life, you know, who have gone through some things and who understand um, you and your particular situation, um, opening up your heart in confidence. Um, you have to evaluate for trust or confidentiality because these things are very important. And you have to see who will be able to understand me and be compassionate and help me to overcome this uh, fears, guilt, shame, worry, tension, whatever it is. That's why, you know, Prabhupada has given us this ISKCON society where we, one of the loving exchanges is opening your heart in con confidence and receiving confidentially um, guidance and instructions. So this is a very loving exchange between two Vaishnavas. I encourage you to find someone because we all need a good friend in Krishna consciousness. We need someone to whom we can open our hearts in confidence and share what has happened to us or what is you know, troubling us and, and, and be relieved of that burden because you know, as Bhakti Pita Maharaj said, you know, secrets have power as long as we don't share them. Once it's out in the open, it no longer has the power over you. So I would encourage you to find a good person to talk to, someone who will be very compassionate towards your struggles, who will be understanding because they have also gone through life and understand things and, uh, you know, will be able to help you like that. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you, Namrata. Nice question. <laughs> Mahatma and Mahima, my respects and love to you too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we are at 7.31, my time, which is about an hour. Um, if no one has any other questions or comments or realizations. Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Mataji, uh, it was a wonderful uh, verse and an explanation and very, very important. Mm. Um, especially, you know, amongst all the tribulations that will come through or, is, or, or we are going through to have patience and to, uh, to have that quality uh, to surrender and rely on Lord Krishna. You know, that is a, uh, a very difficult thing to, to develop or, well, how, how shall I put it? I'm just trying to find the right words. Patience. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, patiently waiting for his mercy. That's a mm. big thing. Mm -hmm. So how do we develop that in the sense that because, you know, uh, yes, Mataji, because we are sure that Krishna will take care of us. Krishna is with us. Guru is with us. But many times we become impatient, driven by situations, circumstances, and even our own mind. Mm -hmm. How do we develop that patience? Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. That is why we need very strong association. We need good friends. We need good mentors. We need good uh, um, support from our, our 
particular spiritual family. We need to have uh, people tell us it's going to get better, have faith in this process. We have been through this. We have come out of it. You will come out too. We need reassurance from our seniors. We need reassurance from those who have been through things. That is why uh, our society, our association of devotees is very important for our spiritual life. You know, like the lone sheep, you know, we can't go it alone. Uh, just like as a, a, in an army, in a battlefield, you know, all the soldiers, they're together in formation. You know, if a lone soldier just goes out into the field, he's going to get picked off very quickly. So we have to walk hand in hand because we are in battle against Maya. You know, Srila Prabhupada says, becoming a devotee means more or less declaring war <laughs> against the illusory energy. So we have to take strength from each other. We have to take uh, association from each other. We have to take association, especially those who are themselves um, experienced in, in uh, Krishna consciousness in managing uh, their challenges, who have themselves received compassion, mercy, instructions from their seniors, which means the parampara, you know. So we, we want association of devotees who will inspire us, who will strengthen our faith, who will reassure us during tough times and who will be there for us while we are going through it. Very important for us to have spiritual family in crisis situations so that they can be there to support and help us. I think this is very good because, I mean, so the key point there is again association and our association depends on quality relationships. And I think the topics that we were discussing about, uh, sorry, Maharaj was discussing about building genuine relationships. Because without that, if those relationships are not uh, factual, are not duplicit, uh, are real, only then we can benefit. And we can, as, is, uh, as you mentioned to Namrata Mataji's question before, to disclose in confidence that can only happen with a genuine and a true relationship. So I think this is this is quite interconnecting. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, very, very, very important. We have to be very, very confident about whom we are confiding in. We have to be so careful because we are giving a very dear thing our heart. So this person must be 100% confidential. You must be very sure. They are not going to blab your story all over the place. You must be very sure that you can trust them, that they have the wisdom to guide you, that they have the uh, qualifications to, to give you guidance and instructions and you know support and help. They must have empathy. They must understand what you're going through. So these are not easy things. So when you find such a devotee, grab them. They're very rare and they, they can help us so much, you know, and going through life, we need such people in our life. We can't, we can't do life alone. That's not possible. It's uh, practically impossible. That is why we are having so much of problems, you know, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, this thing, that thing. There's so much breakdown of the family, so much breakdown of society, so much breakdown of healthy, loving, stable communities that people are, uh, you know, it's a very dire. Actually, the world is on fire. It's a very dire situation. Our only saving grace is somehow, by Guru and Krishna's mercy, we have come to this moment. It is here that we're going to find shelter, and this movement is going to save the world. This is the movement which will save the world. So we have our work cut out for us, you know. We, we do want to progress in our spiritual life so finding good mentors finding good confidence is key component for our growth because they will give us feedback they will say you know Sri Devi you really need to work on this area you know you're making that same offense again and again and I may not be able to see it but because they love me they care about me they're observing me they will tell me where I'm going wrong what I'm not doing right what needs correction like that. So we need feedback from our well-wishers. We need support during difficult times. Basically, we need loving relationships in our Krishna consciousness. 
Yes, Mataji. Very true. Good point. Thank you for bringing that out. Okay, we are at 7.38. Um, looks like uh, we have run out of questions. Is that a correct assessment? And uh, unless anybody would like to add something, we can end the call. Thank you for a wonderful class, Mataji. Thank you for being online and giving us your wonderful association, Diptesh Prabhu. We have strength in numbers. The more we are, the stronger we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hare Hare Krishna. Okay, dear devotees, thank you very much for very patiently listening to your little god sister <laughs> and uh, encouraging her. Um, I pray that uh, it was pleasing to you in some small way and beneficial. Please give me your blessings. Please overlook my deficiencies and please pray for me to overcome my anarthas. This is my humble request. Hare Krishna. Lavanya, we can end the call now? Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much for the class, Mataji. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Shri Devi.